And in this way, Sicily roads caused, the, caused wars between blacks, which he then stepped in as an intercessor. Cecil Rhodes built up a formidable hatred between the Matebeles and the Mashonas. He played the Matebeles off against the Mashonas and the same the other way around. What is strange about Cecil Rhodes was that, and which is never revealed in the many books that were told about him, was that Cecil Rhodes was a student in search of the deepest mysteries of Africa. He made friends with healers, with shamans, and he actually took part in their rituals. And through them, he learned of the many secret and holy places which were to be found in the land that now bore his name, Rhodesia. And one of these holy places that he learned about was those hills upon whose summits you see great boulders, namely the Matobo Mountains, the mountains of the great boulders. There, Rhodes learned that the most powerful kings of the Mashona and the Makaranga people lay buried, and he decreed that after death he too should be buried there. But isn't that um, very much linked uh, to legends and stories of the Chittahuli and the reptilians? Yes, sir. The Matopo Mountains are held even today as one of the places on earth where the Chittahuli are often seen and where they land in their craft. And there is more, sir regarding this thing. Much more. Cecil Rhodes had himself buried above the grave of a much older leader and a far greater man than himself. We are told, say, that the the first Munumutapa, a remote ancestor of mine, Nyatsimbi Mutota, died and was buried in the Matopo Mountains. And Cecil Rhodes found the place where Nyatsimbi lies buried. And he ordered that he should be buried on higher ground than Nyatsimbi. And by, by so doing, he showed the Matebele and the Mashona people in death that he, John Rhodes, was far superior to Nyatsimbi Mutot. How did Rhodes' influence in the creation of the mines and the whole basis of the what's even now the modern South African economy, how did that affect the people in terms of control and losing control of their destiny? First of all, sir, our people totally ignored the large mining operations that they soon saw taking place in their country. Our people were happy to stay in their villages, but New laws were instituted by the colonial government of Natal especially, where all able-bodied men were forced to go on a long-distance journey by foot to work 
for starvation wages in the diamond fields of Kimberley. Many, many stories are told of brave black men and women who went to Kimberley to work in the city of, in the town of Kimberley amongst all kinds of disease and corruption and violence and also to work in the great hole of Kimberley, a hole which before had been the site of one of the holiest hills known to our people in that part of South Africa. Cecil Rhodes and his people did much to destabilize black family life in, our, in Natal and other places inhabited by black people. He forced the local chiefs to, to pay tax they and their followers. He forced the chiefs to send their sons and the sons of their people to work in the diamond fields. He told them that if they refused to do this, he would call the soldiers from England to destroy them all. Tax was now demanded of our people, not in cattle, as had been the case before, but in gold sovereigns. So a young man had to go leave his father's home and go by foot over the Drakensberg Mountains, walk great distances to Kimberley, and there to work for one gold sovereign a year, a sovereign which would then be turned over to the chief who would in his turn turn it over to the colonial authorities as tax. The South Africa Company, the British South Africa Company of Cecil Rhodes, um, created so much of the economy of South Africa that we see today. Um, and this has been taken over by other companies, not least the ones controlled by the Oppenheimer family, who seem to be to be the uh, to me to be the Illuminati's branch managers in uh, South Africa. Um, they uh, are involved in the Anglo-American Corporation in um, De Beers, the diamond operation. Then there's another offshoot of the Rhodes Network, which is the Lawn Row Company, uh, London Rhodesia Company, which to me has grotesquely uh, manipulated and abused Africa um, since its creation. What's your view of this post roads network that so controls South Africa today? Say, in answering your question, I want to be very, very fair, because my philosophy as an African warrior priest commands me to be fair even to my deadliest enemies. The Anglo-American Corporation has done a lot of good in South Africa during the course of its existence. Sir Ernest Oppenheimer assisted in the building of several townships near Johannesburg. He did not do it for love, of course. He did not do it for altruistic reasons. But the fact was that on a massive scale, he and his company created roofs over the heads of many black families. In fact, a large part of Soweto near Johannesburg is his company's creation. But the Anglo-American Corporation also has a lot to answer for in front of the throne of God. 